This is the test. Get my T. Oh, hello. Wow. <laughs> welcome, welcome. So I'm just going to go ahead and go over some of this code that I've been working on. And I'm going to do the full thing. I'm going to show you how to use this and how to do a push button uh, to simulate kind of like an elevator. So, yeah, <clears throat> it's Kitu. Is that like Kite? So, hopefully, this turns out all right. If it doesn't, I'll just delete it and do it again. But let me just see if I can check my audio. Hold on. Let's see. Just one second. And da -da 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 -da. Sounds pretty good. All right. Good. Awesome. Okay. The Twitch source code got leaked. Is that news? Is that something that happened today? Oh boy. <laughs> so it feels like the everything is crumbling. Facebook, Instagram, same company basically. It's all it's all crashing down, but it's exciting because I think we're going to move to other stuff. You know. There's always opportunity. But Twitch, yeah. I was thinking of uh, streaming on Twitch for... I, I did it once, way back in the day, like um, three years ago, and it wasn't that It wasn't that great. Uh, I don't know. There's just a lot of weird competition. It's, it's really weird. Um, Twitch, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Maybe someday, but I'd rather go somewhere else. So let's go ahead and get into this. So if anybody else pops in later and sees this recording, it'll be on my channel. And I plan to do at least one live stream a week. Um, hopefully, uh, just to show you kind of like how it's going. I haven't been really uploading a bunch in the past year. So hopefully we're gonna change that and do at least once or twice a week live streams. And we'll just see. How it goes. Yeah, India. Yeah, I noticed that a lot of my subscribers are, um, and viewers are from India. So, hello. Hope everything's well. Uh, aren't you supposed to be asleep? You must be uh, <laughs> wide awake. Wide awake. Yeah, I got a lot of people from like India, Pakistan. Um, although I've been picking up a lot of subs from the U.S. recently. So, um, maybe we'll just have a big, big party big world party. All right. Let's go ahead and switch. Here we go. Kimchi Robotics in all its glory. So I need to get out of this elevator right back here. It's a pain in the ass. I've been stuck down here for a couple years. Something happened. I just woke up. Yeah. ECEC -E in college. Mm. Ooh, college. Wow. Long time ago. Um, hopefully we'll get out of this basement or wherever I am. Oh, Morocco. What's up? Oh, man. That's a hard name. to Moraone Fare? I have no idea how to say that. I know how to speak Korean, but I don't know how to pronounce other, other names. So I apologize, but hey, we'll have fun. Um, so yeah, we're going to code this seven segment, but first, let's see what Jif has to say. 
Let's see. I'm just this is a test. This is a just kind of a test. So here we go. Hold on to your butts. So you uh wanna play a game? Let's play my favorite game. Staring contest. Alright, alright. Ready? Don't blink. Go. Don't blink. You are not going to win this game, I promise. Hey. Okay. <laughs> so I think the audio worked. Did you see it? Yeah? All right. Yeah, it looked good. I was checking it out on my laptop, so it seemed it seemed like the audio was coming through pretty good. So, um, just again, this is a reminder. This is just a test stream. I have no idea. It it took me a while to get this stuff all figured out, and you would not believe all the wires that are all over the place here. But hey, we make it happen. All right. <clears throat> so let's go into what I'm trying to do. Uh, huh. Boom. There we are. So I have Programmer's Notepad open. All right, I have to explain something. I started out with the Arduino, um, which has the Atmega 328P chip on it. The Arduino was really confusing to me. I couldn't figure out how to program it. I didn't understand what was happening when I tried to do the code, and a lot of people were just copying and pasting, and yeah, I mean, they just want it to work, and they'll figure out later. But... Um, I figured out that I needed my personality. I personally needed to go a little deeper. I wanted to know exactly what I was doing because I wanted to be really good at this. And I was already done college. And um, later on, I went to get a master's degree in, in business. But I, I really wanted to understand this because I, like, I, I feel like in the future, most people are going to have to understand this stuff. And they're going to have to somehow incorporate it into their daily lives. I know that sounds like a far-fetched kind of you know utopian dream, but I feel like with how technology is, people are going to have to just get smarter. You know, they're just going to have to get better and better. So I hope to teach anybody that wants to watch uh, a little bit and and maybe maybe motivate them to help them understand. Because when I was growing up, I couldn't do math. I couldn't do any of that stuff. I'll, I'll tell you all about those stories later, but it's kind of a miracle that I've been able to understand any of this, but it does take time. So like, I understand why if you go to, um, if you go to college and you study this stuff, that's a good route. I think, um, anything technical is worth going to college for. Um, so if you're going, congratulations, it's a long journey, I think, and just choose something that you want to do and have fun with it. I think it's important to, to have fun. So, ECE, is it a good course to choose? I'm not sure what that is. is. That embedded coding electronics? Embedded coding electronics, maybe? I don't know. I'm not sure what ECE means. Um, yeah, anything, anything's good to get into. Um, there's a lot of people learning coding over in, um, over on, on your side of the world over there um, in Africa and Asia. Um, all, all kinds of people learning coding. In the U.S., we're kind of falling behind because I think we've gotten kind of lazy. So, All right, so here's my programmer's notepad. And let me show you something real quick. So here's the basic idea of the code. Before you start any code, I recommend... And I'm not an expert. I'm just a dude. But... You know, I spent like five years of my life doing this. Um, so you need to have a plan for what you want to do. Basically, I want to have this seven-segment display. 
which is what this is. I want the seven segment display display numbers. And I want it to, oh man, I can barely see that. Let's zoom in. Hold on. There you go. All right, so we want it to display numbers and we want them to display numbers when a button is pressed. Okay, so this is my plan. And to be specific, I want the numbers, I want it to be kind of like an elevator. Right? So if I want to escape that elevator behind me, I need to uh, make a button that simulates the elevator coming down, you know, the floors, like, you know, like, you know, from the top down or, you know, from the bottom up to the different floors. So when the button is pressed, we're going to display those numbers. And let's go from like nine. Oops, nine to zero. And then when it gets to zero, we want it to stay at zero um, until button is pressed again. All right. So it sounds like it's really easy, but it's actually really complicated. However, I will show you everything that you need to know. Um, and even if you do a different chip or you do a different programming language, I think you're going to be able to understand what's going on. Like if you do Arduino or Python, Raspberry Pi, anything like that, or PIC32, you're gonna see what is really going on inside of the chip. And remember, it's just flipping on switches. That's all you're doing inside of chips is you're flipping on switches. And that's why I like C, because you get down in and like you actually like are flipping the switches. So let's go ahead and get that out of the way. So here's my breadboard. And you saw this in my seven segment LED uh, video. These are just connected to each of the different pins. And I showed you in the video exactly what that pinout was. And keep in mind the top of the chip is this little indentation right here. You see that indent at the top here? So that's the top of the chip. And I'll get a diagram right here. Here, this is a diagram. Uh, Boom, that's pretty ugly. So if you look at the Arduino, you can see that the chip is right here. And here's the top of the chip right there, that, that dent right there. <laughs> you can finish co <laughs> You finish college, but you can't figure out what you like. I'm Reed Paul, is that how you say it? What's up, Edward? Um, yeah, I was the same way. I graduated in psychology, and that was a big mistake. I found out that I was in a class with a bunch of crazy people. <laughs> and then I got to senior year, and... Um, yeah, I... Man, I busted my ass. I got really good grades, and I was really good at memorizing tests and stuff. I'll tell you guys maybe some stories later. But I got accepted to an internship at the FBI, and then... That year, was 2009, they canceled all the internships, but maybe that was a good thing. So, and then later I went to, to move on and live in Korea for uh, 10 years. So, and that's when I figured, you know, I want to learn something cool. And that's why I picked this up. Manvendra, hello. Hope you're doing well. Wow, people are showing up. This is cool. Glad to have you all here. So here's the top of the, the chip, actually. It's this indent. So don't forget that. They just put it in here, and then they just have, you know, connections coming to the board and stuff like that. But I just wanted to use the chip. So I take that out, or I buy the chip separate. And I bought some more the other day, but they're not shipping until, like, July. Maybe sooner. We'll see. Um, so here's the chip. So now it's here's the top right here. And basically, you have port B pins right here. And, and it's weird how they put it six and seven over here. And they have port C, which is mainly uh, analog input. So if you have like a, um, uh, let's see, if you have a, oh, what's that thing called? Yeah. Hold on. Ooh. So if you have like, um, oh, come on. Yeah. So if you have one of these, 
uh, this would be something that produces analog input. Um, that's what those pins are for. Uh, they're connected to certain things on the chip. And then you have, so the PC or pin C bank, the, the data direction register C is connected all the way down to here. And then you have uh, port D pins over here. So you'll notice that they have like different stuff. Like you'll see like the certain clocks are connected to certain pins and you have to keep that in mind. So if you're doing like a code and you do like clocks and interrupts and and um, if you're doing uh, like timers with uh, interrupts and pulse width modulation, you'll notice these pins are specifically connected to, you know, OC, o, OC0A, sorry, um, for that PWM. So if your code's not working, like it might be because of something like that anyway. I'm getting too far ahead. So I'm gonna connect my, I can use any pin I want. I'm gonna hook up my seven segment LED to all of these pins and on port B. So I just wanna keep it separate from the button, the push button. And so here's my push button right here. So we're gonna connect this to pin PC zero. All right, it's not an analog thing. It doesn't matter. I'm just gonna use these, these pins. I, I don't need anything for analog here. That's what ADC means, the analog to digital converter. I don't need any of that stuff. I'm just gonna use it as a normal um, input output pin, okay? Um, if you need to look at my previous video where I have all the seven segment stuff listed, go ahead and uh, look at that. And uh, all right, let's move on. So. Ah, this thing's sticky. Boom, there it goes. So let's go into the actual code. I'll put this here. And zoom out. Come on. There you go. All right, so I'm just going to take this uh, push button. If you look at the push button, if you don't know how this works, basically these two legs on this type of push button, there's different ones. I'm going to use an actual, like an arcade push button for uh, the next video when I finalize this this thing. So the electricity just goes in through here and then when you push the plate down, it goes through on this side. I used to think it would go from this side to this side, but that's not the case. You can always put it in the breadboard and then you can just, you know, um, have your electricity going in one side and then you just, you know, put a like an LED on it and then you can see which two sides you need to connect. I used to think it was that way, but it's it's not. It's actually on the same side. So that's why I have these here. So I have, I'm gonna turn on PC0, pin PC0. I'm gonna turn that on high. So it's gonna output electricity. And that's gonna go through here. And then I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put this right on that same row. So if you watch my breadboard video, you'll know. Um, it goes on that same row. And then I have the other leg right here, and that's connected to ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell my code to detect when this voltage goes low. It's gonna go low. And notice I have the ground, this ground rail that this is connected to. It's connected to this side. I'm gonna put my power and my ground uh, on these two, uh, these two rails right here. So they're all sharing. And also notice I have a, a ceramic capacitor. So after I did the video with the seg seven segment display, I noticed sometimes it wouldn't do what I wanted it to do. And these are very cheap. You can get these, these are very cheap. I forget, this is a very uh, like low grade uh, ceramic capacitor. I forget how much it is like the picofarads, but you just put it over the, the positive and the ground line and it helps balance out um, any voltages, uh, any voltage spikes. And that helps the seven segment display to work. What was happening was it would work like half the time and it would skip like the number four or the number nine. And it was really agitating me. And then I found out that it's because if you don't have a capacitor, it can cause timing issues. All right, so I have my push button connected here. So when I, so the electricity is coming through here. When I push it, it'll complete the circuit. It'll go to ground, and that'll cause 
the, the, the electricity to go low on this pin, and then I'll tell the code to say, hey, you know, start the, start the countdown for this. Start uh, changing these numbers. And let me bring up the code. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do this code, oh man. I need a bigger desk. Yeah. Okay, first need some code music, right? You hear that? It's coming in good. Turn it down a little bit. All right. So when you start a new C program, you need to make sure that you have your proper include files and you you want to make sure that you have everything you need. So first, let's go ahead and include the um, basic um, AVR input output header file. So this is included with the, uh, the tool chain everything like if you download AVRC you'll have all this um, if you have an Arduino you can still program it in C and I think I need to show you how to do that there is a video on YouTube I think I saw and um, it's not that hard it, it, it's really not um, you can still program your AVR in C or your uh, Arduino in C and you can program it like this it has all these include files installed when you install everything for Arduino, I believe. All right, so I, I also need to include uh, the delay header file. Um, and then that's pretty much all we need. So the delay is like, you know, if you tell the chip to do something and then you tell it to wait a little bit, that's when the delays come in. You need to understand though that the delays also delay the entire chip, like it freezes everything until the time is up and then it proceeds. So if you're getting like weird stops in your code, it's because you probably have too many delays or the, yeah. Instead of delays, you can use interrupts and then use clock timers and stuff, but it's very complicated. All right, so we need to first um, kind of lay out what the code's gonna look like. So at the top, that's our preamble. We're gonna come down to the bottom and we're going to, um, I always forget what this is. <laughs> I have to write it down. I'm look, looking at what it looks like here. So this is the main. So this is like the stage. Like if you have a performance, you have the stage set. This is setting the stage. So we're gonna use port B. So we're gonna say DDRB, data direction register B, which is where all the port B pins are. And this is an or statement. And we're gonna say turn on, we're gonna bit shift. We're gonna turn on, or uh, sorry, we're going to use this one. So this is representative of eight bits. So we're gonna say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That, all, that turns on every single pin on uh, port B. So all of them from PB0 all the way to like PB7 or whatever it was. That turns on every single one. So port uh, pin PB0 starts right here. So if you only turn that one on and everything else was zeros, that would actually be um, the only one turned on. That would be PB0 right here. And then PB1, PB2, so it goes like that. Um, so that sets them all to output electricity. They're all gonna output electricity. Electronics communications engineering, is that a good course? Probably, yeah. Um, just my recommendation is when I went to college, I didn't really understand what I wanted to be, and I didn't have anybody to help me to understand what I should do. And it was, I mean, I was a really good student. I was really damn good, but I regret wasting four years on something that didn't help me. So if you know exactly what you wanna do, if you, if you wanna build stuff, if you wanna invent stuff, or if you wanna work for a company, yeah, go go for it. And don't be stuck to like one thing. Just choose like an industry or a field that's profitable. Make sure you can make money uh, and that is hiring a lot of people. Um, that's what I suggest. 
Um, that's just you know my personal opinion, but you can do whatever you want. Not investment advice. <laughs> um, it, it just sucks. There's so many people that go out and get loans, and by the end of four years, they've spent like so much money. You know, tens of thousands of dollars, maybe a hundred thousand dollars or more, and they're in their twenties or thirties, and you know they they don't make any. Um, they don't make any money and it sucks. So just be very careful of that. Be careful of the trap. All right, so the code's looking good so far. We got our main, we got a preamble up at the top and then we're going to, so the, this header file here, the input output, that's where this comes in. This stuff is all like coded into that header file. It's just a bunch of stuff they've, they've done for you and then you refer to it. So if you're using a different chip, you'll use different header files. If you're using a different language, um, you'll use different header files and you can make your own. I'm gonna show you in a second um, or in a minute how we do that. Um, all right, so let's go down to the, the loop. So while, let's go down a little more. So while the chip is running, that's what that one means, while it's on we're going to do code in this area here. All right, so these are just, I mean, if you can get these three basics down, the preamble, the main, and the loop, um, it's pretty much the same for the other languages. Uh, you're gonna be good, you're gonna be really good. And then for AVR and C, you have to include this uh, return zero. Wait, no, not there, there. Uh, it never gets to this line, oops, I forgot the semicolon. It never gets to that line, but that is pretty much um, required. It's it's good practice. All right, so you got this. You got, oh, whoops, you don't need that there. All right, so notice that the main doesn't close until the very end. All right, the loop closes right here. So here's the beginning of the loop. You tell the code what to do over and over and over and over. So if it's checking if the push button is pushed, it's doing that over and over and over again. And then there's the... Um, there's the, the close of that. But what what it's gonna do while it's on, while it's running the chip, that's what the one is, right? One, zero, one, zero. It's just gonna keep going and going and going and going and going. And the order that you put stuff in here is important. All right. And then, yeah, so the actual code closes up here, I believe. Let me make sure I did that right. Yeah, of course I did. Okay, so let's go on to the next part of the code. Um, we need to set our, you can do, te oh, one th cool thing about C, um, if you're doing C language, you don't really have to indent and stuff like Python. Python is very picky and a lot of languages are picky because um, it just keeps a structure. However, C is cool because you don't necessarily need to indent the code will still work. And you can do as many spaces as you want. A lot of people do like four. I'm just like, whatever, I don't know. All right, so we're gonna do data direction register C because that's where our push button is. And we're going to tell it to, um, just look at my note here. We're gonna tell it to, uh, just for simplicity, let's turn all of them on, right? Why not? Turn them all on. And later on you could, turn on, you know, just one of them. You can go in and replace the ones with zeros and just have the the PC zero pin turned on all the way on the right. And remember the semicolons, and then we're going to um, turn, we're going to into port C, and we're going to turn on pin PC zero. So what that does, so we've set these pins to output we set these pins to output. However, we, we're turning on the pin specifically on PC0, so it's always on. The electricity is always trying to shoot out, and until we push the button, it's, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's just gonna be ready to discharge into ground. All right, so that's pretty much it for now. Let's go to um, what I was talking about, the the header file. So what I'm going to do is copy and paste my previous um, my previous header file that I made because there's no time for for that. Um, 
Okay. Boom. All right, so this is my seven segment header file. First, I want you to look here. This is like the preamble, right? At the top of this code. Um, you could put this all in this here. It doesn't matter. What I wanted to do was I wanted to keep it separate from the code so it doesn't look so confusing. That's all this is. That's all the header files are. That's it. It's pretty cool. So I made this separate file in here. So you'd go in here, you know, click new file, and then you'd save it as a .h file. It's very important. And you can create a folder. Let's do that now. Let's, let's create a folder. Um, so I'm going to create a folder, and you might not be able to see what's going on on my screen, but you need to create a folder with all this stuff in it. So I'm going to label this folder um, uh, test stream. Dot, oh, test stream is the name of the folder. Test stream. And then... I'm gonna go into that folder. I know you probably can't see it, I'm sorry, but I don't wanna show you like all my files, you know? Come on. <laughs> um, okay, so now I'm gonna save it as the same name, teststream.c. All right, so there you see it at the top. Or let me show you. Da, 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 da. Yeah, let me, let me pull that down a little. And boop. there you go. There you go. See it? Okay, so it says teststream.c. So I created a folder called test stream, and I have the capital in the middle because that's just what everybody does. And then I labeled it dot c. If you just save it as like you know test stream text file, it's not gonna work. It has to be a dot c. And then when you have a header file, save it as a dot h. And what you do is you put them both in the same folder. Very important. Makes it a lot easier. Um, you don't have to save header files in the same folder, but yeah, you don't want to get confused. <clears throat> Magnet link for Twitch link. I have no idea what that means. I don't know. All right. Uh, I'm a boomer. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna go into the header file. And this is all of that. So basically, if you watched the previous video, you'll notice that I defined a name. So I called it zero, because I'm gonna show a zero on my seven segment display. And it has port B pins that I have connected to the display. And I already went over all that, so go ahead and take a look at that. That's what that is. I mean, you could also, you know, you could also paste that here. It doesn't matter. If you didn't want to do a header file, you can put everything right here. It's the same thing. I just like to keep it a little organized. All right. So here we go. Uh, I'm also going to make a function, like I said in the previous video. It doesn't take anything, uh, it's nothing um, it doesn't return anything. It's just a normal function. So we say void. And then I just called it display and a capital N for number. Display number. And then it's going to take a, a, a string of characters. And you just write uh, C-H-A-R space and then you give it a name. So we're saying, okay, display number is going to do whatever this name uh, says to do. And this number is gonna be associated with this. You can call it like, you know, choco pie, or you can call it, you know, kimchi. You can say whatever you want. You can call this whatever you want. But you just have to see it as like, it's like a container. It's like a container, like a Tupperware container, and you put your food in it. And then we're gonna go down to here and say, do whatever number says. And we put the semicolon, right? Because it's a statement. We're saying, do this. So it does number, and that number is whatever we put in here. So if I say zero, it's gonna do whatever zero says. Zero says, turn all these pins on. All right, and then I have a delay. So this is how you do a delay. That's included in this hel header file here. Hell, fi hell file. <laughs> uh, so we have underscore delay, underscore 
milliseconds and then I have 125 and that was so in my video I, I told you that was for one second uh, on my chip so in milliseconds 125 was about one second delay for my chip running at 8 megahertz if you're running at 1 megahertz you need to do the math um, to, to do that you can also do trial and error you can do whatever you want all right and then I'm gonna tell it to clear so if you've ever done like LCD screens, you have to clear the screen if you want to display something new. You can't just like, you know, continue to write on the screen because the stuff that's on there before won't disappear. So I'm clearing the screen. So what we do is we, you see we have an, this is an or statement. What we're doing, so we're saying, um, or statements, I'll have to do another video about that. <laughs> so th these are called operators, operators. And they go in and they say, all right, so these bits are all zero. Um, we're going to flip them all to one. If you do an and, it compares what was written to it before. Like if you have one, zero, zero, one, zero. If you have an and and an equals, it'll, it'll combine those two. So it'll say, hey, if it's on, you know, keep it on. And if it's off and we turn it on, turn that on. That sounds confusing. I'll have to do another video. So... The way to turn it off is you say, okay, include everything that's on and turn everything on. So take whatever was in there before and turn them all on and then flip that, invert that. That's what that tilde is right here. It says flip that, do the opposite. So if we turn them all on, include everything and then turn everything on and we say, yeah, do the opposite. That turns them all off. All right. Whew. So I take this, uh, this here, this display number, okay? And then we can use that to simply, so we'll erase number and we'll just say zero. So I used all caps, so I got to put it in caps. And that's what we do. I mean, that's pretty much it. And then you save the code and then you will, uh, let's see, does this show? Okay, so then you, you go in the menu and you make clean. And you make all. However, I need to include a header file or a make file. It's confusing stuff, huh? So if you need a make file, I have one on my website and I just use the same make file every single time, every single time. And um, let me get it up here for you. So I'm going to copy and paste it to my new folder that I made. And Oh, test stream, okay. All right, so I just copy pasted it. Now let me drag it to the screen here. Ah, that looks ugly. Sorry, my color scheme is terrible. Holy cow. <gasps> it's so ugly. Yikes. Can I change that? It's like pink. Ew. Don't worry, we're going to take a break in just a second here. This is just ugly. Make. Comment. Okay, let's turn it to white. There we go. Woo! Oh, much better. Oh, my eyes. Oh, man. Terrible. All right. So in the make file, um, this is very confusing, so just copy whatever somebody has and, and, and paste it. Um, I got this from Elliot Williams' book, and I don't know if he got it from somebody else, but... So here we have our mo uh, microcontroller at Mega328P. You have to make sure the name's correct of whatever chip you're using. And then I'm at um, 8 megahertz. 4, 5, 6. Okay, yeah. That's 8 megahertz. And then our baud rate, and I uh, don't need that. Okay, this is where your header files are going to be. I showed that in a previous video. Um, this just says to go into this folder and then go up a step and up a step um, you can write your exact path to your header file if you want you can you can put it right there like c colon slash slash and then boom to the header file that's in your in your um, in your program folder very confusing stuff i know all right so my programmer is the usb tiny um I got it from SparkFun, and I've showed you in other videos. And we're going to hook it up in just a second. 
All right. Whew. I'm getting tired too. Wow. Okay, so here it says target Skynet demo. So that was a previous uh, program. So I need to make this program the same name as my C program name. So up here it says teststream.c. So we're going to type in test stream, and we don't put .c. You don't need to do that. And we're going to save. So now that make file is saved in the same folder as my C program. And now I can close that out. And then let's include 7segment.h up here. Include. Seven segment dot H. Yeah, there you go. All right. And then we're going to make clean and make all. Okay, so I got an error. Display number. Okay, so here. So down, you just go down here and you, you, you uh, troubleshoot it. Let me see if I can bring that up here. I pull it up. Whoop. There you go. Okay, so you see I got an error when I tried to compile the code. So this is this is cool. At first when you see this, you're like, ah, what is going on? And if you do like Arduino or um, Raspberry Pi, you'll, you'll see the same thing in the output window at the bottom of your um, compiler program or uh, development environment. So here, in function main, line 21, warning, implicit declaration of function display number error zero undeclared first use in this function so it's saying like it doesn't know what it is it's like what are you doing i don't know okay um that can be solved pretty easily and h all right yeah the one the first thing you want to do is make sure you have it um spelled correctly Display number zero colon. First use in this function. Oh shoot, I hope it's not because I have multiple uh <laughs> I have multiple um header files with the same name. I think that's what it's doing. So anyway, that's how you do the header file. Let me, I don't have time for this. So let me just, we're just gonna bump all this stuff into the main. All right, we'll just get this out of here. Yeah, this is just gonna be easier. Okay, so there it is. Let me move this down here. Okay, so I've defined my function, I got this. And There. Okay, now it's it's working. I would go in and troubleshoot it, but I just don't have time. So, yeah, there you go. All right, so there's no errors, and it shows every file that it's it's generated. And if you look at my C programming uh, tutorial, which has got like over seventeen thousand views, I never expected that that video would take off. So yeah, it's amazing. It, I, my two top videos, the first one is one that I'm very proud of because I didn't feel like doing it and I did it and it turned out to be one of my best videos on the channel. The other video is my worst video and it's the uh, fixing, that, that one I made way before that one. It's fixing the Bluetooth headset, uh, headphones and those ones, those headphones aren't that popular anymore because now everybody has AirPods and, and earbuds. And uh, I don't know, people hate that one. <laughs> but that's fine, I don't care. All right, so here we go. It's all ready to go. So we have all the correct files. And I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the programmer. So let's zoom out so you can see that. So I'm gonna program this and then we're gonna take a little break. I'm gonna take a break. All right, so here is my programmer. All right, and I have um, the power option turned on. So it's gonna help power 
the chip. You can get this at SparkFun. It's a USB tiny. It's great. And make sure you get this uh, this ribbon cable. Like, you, you gotta have it. I mean, look at it. You gotta have it. Okay, so I'll hook up my power to this rail. And then my ground to this rail. Make sure you don't confuse them. Don't connect them. Suck. Is gonna go right here on this pin. And then our Miso master in slave out goes here and then our mosey master out slave in these are just how the chip communicates with the computer that's all and zero clock is to, to to give it a frequency that it can um so they can talk at the same time they can understand each other all right so we got it all hooked up now i'm going to plug it in yeah usb to my computer boom all right so you see i already have a code uh, flash to this chip but let me flash this new code. All right, program. Oh, hold on. Oh, it's not reading it. Now, let me double check. Always gotta double check. Double check the wire. I think one of my wires is getting old. There it goes. Okay, so now it's reading zero. Now, let's go in the code and change that. So if we go back into the code, and um, let's say uh, one. Make clean, make all. Program. Boom, there it is, see? You like that, huh? You like that, I know. I know, it's pretty cool. All right. Let's go in. And. So we have display number one, and let's just go ahead and set it for. Um, let's give it a countdown. So we'll start with nine. And then I'm just going to copy paste that. Look at this. Watch this. Hey, watch the skills. Ready? Hold on, hold on. Just bump it down. There you go. You can see that now, right? Okay. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. Watch this. Boom. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. So then I go in and I say eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Jettle. All right. <laughs> Put a bunch of spaces in there so you could see it. All right. So I'm going to make clean, make all. Program. There we go. Timer go. One, ooh, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Zero. All right. So why does it go back to nine? Because this is it's a loop, right? You see this, right? This is a loop, so when it gets to zero, it goes right back up to nine. All right. One of the challenges is going to be to have it stop at zero and not move on until we push the button again. So we're going to set some conditions, some if statements, like if you know you do this, then th do this until there's another condition, another if. Oh, if you do that, then move on. All right. We're going to go ahead and. I'm take a little break. I'm gonna hear a word from Jeff. I need a drink. Boom, boom, ba -doom, boom. Hit it, Jeff. Hey. Yeah, you. What? Are you just gonna sit there and not subscribe? You 
didn't even push the like button, did you? Those are some nice arms you got there. And hands. And fingers. I'm sure you could use one of those fingers to, you know. <clears throat> Click something. Am I a joke to you? Oh, there we go. <laughs> I muted my mic, sorry. All right. Um, hey. We got somebody watching. I'm watching you too. I'm watching you. So is Jeff. All right. So we got our code <clears throat> successfully counting down on the seven segment display. Blah, 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 blah. So many different words. So little time. Oh, whoops. All right. So now we need to go in and we need to create a button. Let's do it. So we're going to go in and create this button. And the button code <clears throat> is going to look a little bit like this. Uh, let me move this out of the way. So when we push a button, when we push a button, we need so the button code let's just get a new one so when we push the button oh whoops that's a sticky side there you go it's my schedule <laughs> so when we push the button down we want it to um, do something right However, the problem is when you push these buttons, they can give false readings. They, 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 the plate, so the button looks like this. Okay, inside of the button, it looks kind of like this. So here's like the metal part, and then when you push the button down with your finger, it contacts these two sides and it allows the electricity to go through. That's it. And sometimes if you don't push it down and it, it doesn't connect you to both sides perfectly, like if you just tap it really quick, it won't register that it's actually, the, the electricity doesn't go out enough. It, it's, it's not a solid connection. So the chip might not recognize that as a, an actual um, button press. So there's uh, a few tricks you can do to double check and make sure that you have your, um, button pressed and, and it's sure that it's being pressed and one of the ways you could do that is have a delay so you have the button press and then the chip is like okay it's been pressed and then it waits okay so you have like a delay and then you have and and, and the, it checks one more time that the button is pressed so if it's pressed it waits, and if if you know if it's pressed again, if it's still pressed, then do something. This is called a debouncing, like a bounce, you know. So you're debouncing the code. You debounce the button. 
because you know it bounces. The other way is to do an interrupt, and interrupts um, are a little more tricky. Uh, we'll, we'll do that later. You don't really need to know that right now, especially if you're a beginner like me. Um, yeah, I'm not a pro. <laughs> not not anywhere close. Uh, I just I'm just having fun. So, all right, we're gonna go and do this in the actual code. Okay. Boom. Yeah. Okay. So in the actual code, we're gonna make this bounce, this debounce code. Uh, so we have our display number, and we're going to make a new function. All right, this is a new thing that we're gonna to call to the chip when we need it, or call to the stage. So we're gonna have um, an 8-bit, 8 underscore T, a uh, thing called uh, debounce. Debounce, debounce. And it's not going to take anything into consideration. It's just going to do what it's going to do. That's what that void is. Uh, it took me a long time to understand. So we're going to say if the 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 port C PC zero bit, like like if the the bit in the register is clear, if underscore bit underscore is underscore clear. Oh no, you don't need an underscore in the beginning. That's right. If bit is clear, good thing I have my notes. <laughs> and then we have another parentheses in pin C, specifically PC zero. Don't write a, a, an O, don't, don't get confused. Um, so then we have another close parentheses. So if the bit is clear in the register, like if you push it and the electricity goes out, it says, oh, it's cleared. That's included in the AVR input output header file at the top of our code. Pretty nice, huh? So if the bit is clear on pin C, on specifically PC0, pin C0, then we're going to um, delay. Okay, so we're going to say underscore delay, and we're going to do it in milliseconds. And uh, let's say, I don't know, like 10 milliseconds. Let's do 100 milliseconds. We'll see how that goes. So it's gonna say, oh, it's clear. Okay, then wait. And then we're gonna say, again. We're gonna check it again. Oh, whoops, I forgot a uh, bracket here. A brace, curly brace. Okay, so if bit is clear, pin C, PC zero. Put the curly brace down here so don't forget. And then we're gonna have another um, if statement to say, oh, if it's still pushed after the 100 milliseconds, then we're going to say, um, let's do, you wanna do another delay? Eh, let's just do one delay. Yeah. Uh, return one. This is confusing. Um, let's see, boom, boom. I need one more, boom. And I'll indent it just to keep it clear. Um, this return zero. I don't really want to explain this right now. Just this is what it is. Okay. So if it's not, if it's not, if this isn't true, like if it's not still pressed, it will say it's not done. And if it is pressed, it'll say, yeah, it is done. The ones and zeros, right? Ons and offs. Yeses and nos. That's all that is. Okay, so that's our debounce function. All right, it's an 8-bit integer. It's gonna return a one or, or a, a zero. So then we're gonna say for the actual button code. So in order to start the countdown, we'll say if debounce. Oh, no, uh, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Hold on. Um, let me look at my note. I'm missing something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If debounce... I knew I was right. <laughs> I 
I forgot. Oh man. I know my brain's my brain is melting too. It's melting. If D bounce. Okay, we don't need to put anything in there. And if so if it's debounced, then we're going to do this. Okay. So let's see how that goes. Let's see what it does. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. All right. So there's one part of this code that we haven't included yet. It's the button press state. Okay. So we need to have a, a like a state. Uh, and we're going to have an ape unsigned 8-bit integer button pressed um, and we'll say should we just leave it at that or we'll say we're, we'll, we'll put it in like a an off state okay so this is going to remember have you pushed the button before or have you not has it ever been pushed yet or has it not and it's going to flip-flop between these states. It's going to have uh, the button press state. So we're going to say if it's been debounced. And if um, the button pressed state is exactly equal to zero. That's what that double equals is. Then, you know, do the thing. We have double. We're going to have all our curly braces. Close all our doors. All right. And then at the end of that, we'll say button. We're going to change the state. So after it goes through the numbers, we're going to say button pressed is equal to one. All right. So it won't do it again. We'll make clean. Make all program. Make sure everything's lined up. Hmm. There we go. See, I had to push it for like a long time. It's just how it is. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. That is it. And it won't work again, right? Why? Because we've changed the state of the button press to one. So it says, no, it's been pressed. I'm not going to do it again. Because we said only if it's equal to zero, then do this. Right? Pretty easy. So how can we do it the other way? How do we flip it? So it goes the other way after we already pushed it once. Same thing, just in reverse. So I like to just copy paste. Look at this. Boom. All right, so we're going to change the status. So if if it's debounced and if the button pressed is equal to 1 then turn it off or, or say it was not pushed in. So we're flip-flopping between two states so it can go up and down through the countdown. So we're going to do the countdown in reverse. So what we do is we need to change these. So we'll start at 0 One, two, remember I put it all in capitals. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Whew. I know, it's rough. So this is going to do the opposite. So let's go ahead and make clean, make all, and program it. Okay, now I'm gonna push it, ready? 
Yeah, it didn't register. I think I gotta change this button. Not a very good button. Hello. Oh man, I hope my hope my wires are still good. Hmm. Could be something in my code, right? Yikes. All right, so we're gonna say if debounce if. Uh, okay, so I think we don't need this. Oh, that's right, we don't. Oh, uh, that's right, that's right. We're gonna make this an else if statement. So we're gonna say if this, you know, if it's debounced and and if the button was pressed equals zero, then do this and then switch it to one. Otherwise, if the button pressed is equal to one, then do this. So I think that's where my mistake was. So let's try that. Save it. Make clean. Make all. Let me, make sure, let me see if I have any error codes. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We have error codes. So in line 67. Oh, I missed a parentheses. This happens every time. Uh, 67... 74, what am I, oh, am I missing a curly brace? Expected a colon before the token. Hmm. Let's just save it and see if it gives us that error again, because I fixed the other one. There you go, see. All right, let's program it, and let's push it. Okay, so there's the first one. Boom, boom, boom. Zero. Okay, and then it turns off. So now it should go up. See? Starts with zero, goes all the way up to nine, and it's gonna turn off. I love this stuff. All right. So what if we wanted it to remember and stay on, like, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, at zero and it stays on zero, or it's at nine, it stays on at nine. We could do that. Good thing I brought my notes. Um, so we're going to create another thing. I know. I know it's another thing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. We're going to create another thing. Um, another state. Okay, another status. So we have the button press status, the button press state, and that was an 8-bit integer, an unsigned integer. Uh, the reason why we use an unsigned, so no plus, no minus, it saves memory. You know, we don't need a negative number, so we just say unsigned. The reason why we're using an 8-bit number, which is 0 to 255, is because we're just saying, you know, 0 or 1. That is going to represent on or off. It was pressed, it wasn't pressed, stuff like that. So we need one more. And this is going to be above... The main in our preamble, we're gonna call this unsigned 8-bit. That's confusing, huh? 8-bit 8-bit integer called um, which floor? All right. So we're gonna say which floor is it on? Which floor? And we're gonna make this volatile. I covered this in my last video. Is that how you spell volatile? No, it's not. I'm not very good at English. Not anymore. Man. What happens when you teach English to non-English speakers for ten, over 10 years? Uh, volatile. So here we go. Volatile means that this value, whatever this, this number is going to be, whatever number, which floor is going to be, you can change it anywhere in the code. It, we can access this. It's like giving keys to any part of the code to be able to go in and change that number. That's what it is. And then it'll save that for the next loop. So every time it goes through the loop, if it changes this value, you know, from zero to one, it's going to uh, be able to access that. And I'd never used volatiles. I never understood them until kind of recently. So I think uh, when I was studying Python. All right, we're almost done. So we're gonna go down here and you gotta stay with me. Stay with me. We're almost done. 
Which floor? Which floor is... So we're going to go into the first if statement. So the buttons pressed is equal to one. Um, before that, we need to write our which floor is equal to... Um, what should we do? Um, so it's zero, so we'll just say zero, okay? It doesn't, it doesn't have to be zero, it can be anything really, but just to make it easy. So we're gonna say which floor, we're gonna be on the zero floor, so we're gonna say, okay, it's gonna be zero. Zero also means not or nothing, right? And then we're gonna flip the button pressed equals one. Okay, and then we're gonna go down here and we're gonna say the opposite. Which floor is equal to one? You know, we're just flip-flopping. Right? We don't have to write nine. We're just, it's a state. It's like, you know, on or off. Um, I mean, we could write, you know, we could write, you know, nine, but you don't, you don't need to. You just, just do zero and one. Um, okay, so there's the close of that if statement. This is where it gets really confusing when you have the curly braces and parentheses and stuff. So outside of that, if statement. That if statement is complete. All right. That is complete. So we're going to say, you know, it's which floor is zero state, which floor is one state. And we're going to tell it what to do whenever it's which floor zero state and which floor one state. Um, so we're going to say if which floor is equal to zero. And I like to put my curly braces right away. <laughs> Otherwise, I lose track. Um, oh, we need to set it exactly equal to zero. That's right. Exactly equal to zero. Then we're going to um, display number. You remember, we have that function. Oh, there it is right there. Look, it pops right up. Thanks for looking out. Very nice. So display number zero. Jetta. There. All right, make sure it's all caps because that's what we used previously. I'm gonna save this. And then what do we want for the other state? We're gonna say if which floor is equal to one, exactly equal to one, that's what the double equals is. Then we're going to um, display number. I mean, I could have copy pasted this and just did it, but you know, whatever. I like to type, what can I say? All right, and then, oh, oh, I forgot. Close it, okay. And I'm just going to make sure all this code is ready to go. Let me, all right, I'm gonna indent a little bit just so we don't get confused. Yeah, there we go, that looks good. Okay. All right. Looks all right. All right. So just from the top, we have our include files. We have our seven segment uh, numbers all, you know, hooked up to these pins. And this is, you know, you could do whatever you want. Watch my video. Uh, and then we have the display number function tells it what to do. It's, it's going to, you know, say, hey, whatever, whatever word you put in here, that's what care means, char, whatever, charmander. It's going to do whatever that word says to do and this zero word says to turn on these pins in port b and it and so on and it's going to delay and it's going to flip them all off after the delay this is one second then we have our debounce code that double checks to make sure it's been pushed um and then we have a stat a state of which floor it's on and that's just for our you know is it is it on floor zero is it on floor nine and continue to, if, if it is floor zero, then continue to display floor zero. If it is on floor nine, which we said, you know, was the one state, you know, on off, then continue to display uh, number nine. And that's it. So let's see if this works. If it doesn't, don't cry. You'll be fine. Boom, no errors. So it starts at zero. Moment of truth. Are you ready, Jeff? Moment of truth. 
Here we go. I'm gonna push it. Ah! Son of a bitch. All right, it doesn't work. So let's go in and uh, see what we did wrong. Yeah, like I said, don't cry. Don't cry. Nifty bounce. But was it? This is a part of the process. That stuff in Hollywood where they're like clack, 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 tapping away. That's that's such bullcrap. I mean, you'd have to be like peak levels of uh. Special. <laughs> a savant. All right. All right, let's go in. Let's see. Which floor equals zero? Button pressed equals one. Else if button pressed is equal to zero. And if which floor is equal to zero, display number zero. If which floor is equal to one, display number nine. Okay. The top part looks good. It's just this bottom part. So this is, this is all... This is how you troubleshoot stuff is you got to narrow it down to what is wrong and what isn't what what you know is working and what you know might not be working what you are unsure of. So let me double check this else if so this was working and then it stopped working when we put in the which floor. Okay, if which floor is equal to 0, display number 0, if which floor is equal to 1, display number 9. Let me make sure I didn't get too far out of any if statements. Button pressed equals zero, right? Let's put after you. And this is closed. Yeah, closed. What was that for? Debounce. For hmm. I feel like I'm missing something. I'm missing something. There's something I'm not seeing. What is it? Hmm. Let's program this again, let's see. I know what it is. All right, now it's working, but I know what it is. It's, I need another, see, it works, zero. Okay, we need like another delay, I think, at the top. We'll do another delay. Yeah. Because if I push it now, see that? <laughs> it doesn't want to do it. It does it, but you see how like I had to hold it in and it blinked. Um, the good news is like if you're doing code, whatever you're doing, don't be so hard on yourself. It, you're gonna be frustrated in the beginning when you're when you're new. You need to just walk away and do something else. Um, so now let's try it. It's still flashing like that. It's weird. I wonder if it's because I have these hooked up still. I mean, it is working, so you always have to stay positive like that, and you'll be fine. All right, it's continuing to display zero, so that's good. It's just weird that it, um, I wonder if it's my delay. Maybe my delay should be different. Let me, let me go in and change the delay time, so, Ooh, blah, blah, blah. almost done here. We'll say 10 instead of 100. I feel like 100 is too long. 
So make clean, make all program. All right, so we start at zero. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect. Perfect. It, you'll fine tune it over time. Like you shouldn't waste your whole day trying to figure out how to make it perfect. It just has to work, you know, and it works. So I'll fine tune this in the meantime. Um, like I said, you don't have to use debounce. You can use button interrupts or you can use interrupts with the button. And that's a lot better. Actually, it's like it's like a trigger. So once you set the condition to trigger on that pin, boom, it uh, it does whatever you tell it to. But I am satisfied with this. I, I had it going better when I did it before. But I mean, this is the same code unless I'm missing something. But that's OK. So that's it for this. Um, Looks like most of you will see this after the fact, which is fine. Um, I This is just a test stream anyway, so it looks like the audio levels are good. Um, if it sucks, I'll make it better next time, I promise, okay? I'll do more of these, and I don't know, we'll just have some fun. I think we can make some cool stuff and uh, have some wild times together. Uh, let's go ahead and leave with a word from our favorite animatronic skull face robot jeff take it away jeff hey so yeah you what are you just gonna sit there and not subscribe didn't even push the like button, did you? Those are some nice arms you got there. And hands. And fingers. I'm sure you could use one of those fingers to, you know... <clears throat> click something. I to you. So, you, uh, wanna play a game? Let's play my favorite game. Staring Contest. Alright, alright. Ready? Don't blink. Go. Don't blink. You are not going to win this game, I promise. snack from over there? As you can see, I, uh... I don't have legs or arms. Bring me a snack. Give me a snack. I want a snack. Now. Bring me a snack. What are you waiting for? Bring me a snack or click the like button. Come on. We all have work to do down here. Welcome to Kimchi Robotics. What is Kimchi Robotics? Well, 
We're not quite sure yet. We're still trying to figure that out. He, like, hit his head one day or something, and then he woke me up. So, you know, we just hang out, shoot the shit. Eat snacks. <laughs>